So, good to see you all. Great to be here. And uh, I haven't counted the amount of times we've said cloud today, so I'll, I'll sort of do a bit more in depth on this one. Uh, but you'll hear it a few more times. So who am I? I'm a brief on this one. Uh, I'm the CTO uh, on the imaging IT side. I've been in e-health for about 24 years. I was the CTO at Cambio before. So this sort of intermix between EMRs and imaging is of particular interest to me. I have been working with uh, Epic that was mentioned before. And so striving to make sure we help our customers integrate our solutions in a good way. Uh, I'm also driving and spearheading our major partnerships with technology providers such as Microsoft. I'm blessed with five kids. So Torbjorn sets the sort of goal here for solving the demographic challenge. Um, I'm, not, I'm not on par with him yet, but, but I, I do my little piece to that. So I, and I really thrive in the, this intersection between business and technology. Um, computer science background, did programming since five years old. And I did my MBA at Stockholm School of Economics. So I really enjoy the, this phase that we're in with Sectra, with tremendous growth, great opportunities to leverage technology and grow our business. And some of you have heard Sectra 1 many times as well. This, and I want to maybe stress one thing, that this is our consolidated business model that really allows us to make things easier for customers. It allows us to leverage our different offerings in one unified way. It makes it easier for customers to buy our services, consume the services, and, and to drive usage. We did mention a lot of the different ologies before, but this reduction of complexity is something that we've really been striving for. We want to make it easier for customers to benefit from that great innovation that we're doing. We haven't mentioned that, but we're actually doing two major releases per year. We have some 300 engineers that are just pumping out innovation. And for us to get that out there in front of customers such as Dr. Khan, I mean, that's key for success for our customers and for ourselves. What is a huge shift as well is that we're focusing on not only you know, the traditional way of selling licenses, here's sort of the software, bye-bye, give me my money. We're focused on making sure that we deliver value. And aligning with customer value generation through usage-based business models is one way to make sure that, that we're on the same page. It builds on that cultural structure that we're in the same boat and that we work together with our partners and customers. And so usage-based pricing and the ability for customers to, to start. You know, we heard Dr. Khan again with the pathology side. They're starting in a bit smaller way, but hopefully they'll be able to grow. They don't need to make this huge upfront decision but we can get them started. We can help them on that journey of becoming digital. So this, this transformation into usage-based pricing is key. Doesn't work. Yeah, there it is. And one of the other things that we've talked about that really makes the life even easier is not having to go out and buy hardware, manage that hardware, set up an IT organization, manage security, manage Windows patching, manage SQL Server, and all other the interesting components that goes into getting a solution. So we're saying, you don't need to do that. You can buy this as a service from Sectra. And that is, that, that is so different from what, what it looked like before. And a lot of those issues, again, you heard um, what, what he said. It is key for us that we have this availability, uptime, reliability. These are core systems that we're talking about. And it is hard. It's hard to maintain that level of technical availability. And for us, we're able to do that efficiently in an scalable way, doing this in a cloud-based solution. So it's, this is a huge shift. And again, what we're seeing, huge uptake interest in the market uh, to the point where we're now clearly over a majority of all our new deals are based on Sector 1 or Sector 1 Cloud. Marie did mention some, some sort of uh, <coughs> insights into our funnel. And so it, the, there is just so much pull right now on this. So it's, it's amazing. We, we, we actually thought that this would happen before, faster. We started this journey in Sweden maybe six or seven years ago. And the thing was, we, we thought that the US would be leading in this case. Usually, we see technology leadership in the US. It wasn't the case. It wasn't actually the case in digital pathology either. So here, we actually, in Sweden, we haven't sold one on-prem solution for six, maybe seven years. It's all cloud. It's all software as a service. And th this is happening now. 
So if we look at the general perspective on IT technology adoption, Gartner is saying that more than half of all enterprise IT spend will be in the cloud by 2025. And this is just to give you an idea, it may be a way for you to start assessing how quickly this might happen. One other perspective that, that I usually, you know, when I think about this is a customer on average, if you look at depreciation on the hardware investment they make, it's about five years. So that means on average, all over our customer base, 20% every year will make the decision, or am I gonna go cloud, or I'm gonna go out and buy new hardware. And so I think that's a pretty good way to start thinking about how quickly this shift will happen. And very many customers are already today hesitant of making that investment because what they are doing is that they're buying hardware today that is going to be old. And the elasticity, the ability to grow that Dr. Khan mentioned with an inherent growth of maybe 8% per year in production volumes, then you need to go out and get more hardware. Another thing that we hear from our CIOs that we're talking with is recruiting security people is super hard. This is, I think, again, we talked about the intersection between communications and medical. We do have processes, knowledge in-house that is hugely beneficial in this perspective. And so this combined is really leading to what we believe is what we're already seeing, but we're also expecting a continuous increase of adoption in cloud, not only for net new customers, but from all our existing customers. All right, so that's exciting times. Moving to SaaS from a financial perspective, and this is something we've already addressed before, it means recurring revenue. So it means the historical way to recognize revenue with an upfront license and then a post-contract service and support maintenance agreement is shifting to a more straight line revenue recognition principle. And to exemplify this, we'll run through a basic example where these are more just made up numbers, just give an idea what this means. And so we're looking at the case where we have software as a service deal, about $500,000 over six years of time, it's Torbjörn's numbers, so I'm not sure why he selected six years rather than maybe five years, but that's what we're working with. So that's, that's what the example looks like. And what we wanna illustrate is the effect that historically this would have been recognized, and now I'm talking about the historical previous model as the dark blue one. Historically, it was a upfront direct revenue that's recognized first year. And then we have this post-contract service and support maintenance piece spread out over time, right? What happens now, and this, this is sort of IFRS 15 revenue recognition principles that would deliver access to the solution over time, hence it's recognized on an annual basis. Now we're only looking at the software components and maintenance components in this picture. So this is not taking any additional hosting components such as storage, servers, networking into considerations. This is a basic example of what happens with the software component. Everybody with me on this one? Good. Now, one of the beauties of this is that customers get continuous benefits through sector one. They get access to all new features continuously. And the benefit from Sectra's perspective is that as customers are subscribing to the software over time, if you look at the 16 year projection of total revenues, it's, it's an upside for Sectra as well. Customers get more stuff and, and Sectra is making a a sort of a slight increase on, on revenues on this one. So it's a win-win. This is another perspective, same numbers. And we're saying this differs a bit, so this is not a general truth, but on average, um, the sort of return or break-even perspective point in time is about five to six years. If we look at a SaaS model versus an upfront license. But it, it differs depending on markets, depending on price, depending on competition. All right, everybody with me on this? Super. So recurring revenue then, just a reminder of how we define that. So we have recurring revenue is everything that we're expecting to recur within 12 months. As a sub-segment of that we have, oh sorry, total revenue, recurring revenue, right? And then we're point specifically pointing out cloud recurring revenue that we think 
is a very good indicator of performance in this shift. So we want to call that one out. It's part of our external reporting. It's an alternative performance measure in the, in the annual reports. And so this one, we believe it's important to sort of keep track on. It will show what that growth looks like. And in that case, we're only bringing in revenue related to our cloud uh, sales. More specifically, and we have some delineations here, what's including in that number, we take only revenue that is related to private or public cloud services. But it includes Sector 1, Sector 1 Cloud, Amplifier, Education, Ortho, so everything that we're delivering on, on common platforms, essentially. And it includes, as I mentioned here, software, infrastructure, and operations. So in the numbers that you're seeing, it is the full revenue that we recognize and, and shows the value of the service that we deliver in full to the customers. We're excluding things such as professional services um, and, and anything that's basically not recurring, right? So any on-prem installs or on-prem hardware or anything such. Okay, so those are the numbers. Oh, five minutes, my God. And this is what we've done so far. How, how, how is that even 10 minutes? Yeah. So th th this, is, this is the performance right now. I, I would just keep, keep your eyes on this one moving forward. It's still, it's already showing growth. I, you know, given my, no promises, but if you think about what I said about what we're anticipating on that future speed, it, it'll show up here. Let's see if I'm right. I'm actually gonna speed up really well because I think the last slide is the funniest one and I'm gonna make it a bit, sort of wrap this one up. Uh, some of the effects on the, on the sort of financial side balance sheet, nothing, because we're essentially in the public cloud, we're not buying any assets. So the consequences is that we're recognizing revenue and costs and over time. Cash flow, we're getting payment typically one month in front and then we're paying Microsoft one month uh, after consumption. Profit margins, this is a very important thing. We're expecting this over time with economy of scale and I'll, I'll improve, I'll tell you why we expect this to improve over time uh, at the final slide, slide. So that's a cliffhanger. And it's an important distinction between us and some of our competition. And also from a sustainability point of view, it's greatly improving energy efficiency compared to customers running this on their own. So competition wise, not everybody's cloud is the same. So some vendors will say this is cloud, but it's essentially the customer's cloud. That's the first option. So you sell just licenses, put that in the customer's environment. We don't really think that's cloud. Marie talked about true SaaS. That's not true SaaS. Vendor-controlled private cloud is something that we've been doing in Sweden since Swedish healthcare system haven't been really happy about putting data into American clouds yet. We'll see what happens. And then we have finally the public cloud option. So those are three important sort of ways to deliver cloud that different vendors will claim cloud. How does this then play out in a competitive perspective? Not mentioning this, this vendor, on, 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 the, on the left hand side, maybe on your right hand side, but I just want to call out some of the differences. And we've heard this from, from customers that says, well, you know, they said it was cloud, but then I ended up paying a lot of money for services that I didn't really think about. Whereas a sector says, well, we have a transparent, clear, simple business model, no surprises. If you're on the budgeting side, you hate surprises when you're gonna pay this. So we think this is a clear advantage. There is a number of different alternatives. I'm just gonna call out security again as a comparative strength and our organizational ability compared to some of our competitors. 30 years plus of experience in security does mean something, especially when you're delivering full SaaS. So on the final note, this was the cliffhanger, why is Sectra better positioned than some of our competitors to drive long-term profitability? Because a lot of our competitors are doing this. So they're taking the customer cloud environment and put their software in. There is no economy of scale at all. So what Sectra does differently is that we're, we're actually building a solution that we're selling to our customers where we're able to consolidate, where we're able to use resources in a much more efficient manner. That gives us long-term 
options to drive profitability increase. And if need be, we can compete on price. So it's a usually different approach. We think it's of material impact and it's going to be critical in the future. All right. I think that's that. Thank you so much.